I'm Rafina Wong from the Dean of Students Office of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, HKUST. Today, I'm going to talk about fostering inclusivity, strategies for engaging stakeholders in a university setting. What I'm going to cover includes the importance of inclusivity for students' engagement and success. I'm also going to share about HKUST's improved institutional framework for building inclusivity, the impact of our efforts, and our lessons learned. So why inclusivity matters? In fact, inclusiveness, diversity, and respect is a core value of HKUST. We want to harness the richness in ideas, creativity, and innovation so that we can be a university with significant international impact. But for the Dean of Students Office, one of our key strategy is to use it for student engagement and success because we do provide a lot of opportunities for students to engage in student life and also to develop themselves. And our experience aligned with what the researchers tell us about having an inclusive and equitable campus climate. It will increase students' engagement and success, which is one of our goals, and also improve our students' well-being, as well as enhancing their critical thinking and intercultural skills. Those are some of the results we would like to see in our students as we provide co-curricular programs for them. However, we do face a lot of challenges as we try to achieve inclusivity here on campus. Hong Kong has a very strong Chinese cultural heritage. For those of you who have been to Hong Kong, you can see that over 90% of us are ethnically Chinese. Therefore, it is very, very understandable that socially, people from the same cultural or language backgrounds tends to cluster together, and it happens on our campus as well. And members of the campus, for example, our food vendors, our whole attendants, may not have the proficiency in English, uh, which is the medium in teaching in HNUST. And therefore, there would be a lot of implicit biases, misunderstandings, or stereotyping that are going on, despite our effort in diversity and inclusivity. So what are some of the ongoing effort that we're making or adding in order to engage more and different stakeholders? The first new things that we have done uh, is back in 2022, on the policy level, we have established a diversity and equal opportunity committee. Um, so it would provide uh, strategic oversight on all aspects of diversity and inclusivity. Uh, we would like to cult uh, cultivate awareness and education uh, and also oversee all the policies and practices and have regular review on the mechanism for handling complaints on harassment and discrimination. All these efforts have been happening on our campus, even before the establishment of the DEOC. However, uh, the committee will have a good representation from different members of our campuses, uh, and uh, we are able to kind of provide a much more strategic pathway for our effort. The next thing that is very important, of course, is our student experience in the learning. Uh, therefore, we have some community of practices, uh, and one of it is focusing on enhancing intercultural learning experiences. It is a platform for collaboration among faculty and staff uh, so that uh, they can enhance intercultural learning among students. Uh, more importantly, uh, it is a capacity building uh, effort for us because a lot of the faculty and staff may not be aware of the intercultural issue and we would like them uh, to uh, be educated uh, so that they can also advocate for intercultural learning, weaving into curriculum development and student learning. And then um, what I'm showing you on the picture is something that you probably will have on your campuses. We do have a lot of intercultural festivals 
the dialogue so that people can be exposed to different culture. Uh, for example, on the uh, right uh, side uh, of the uh, slides, you can see that we have a big event. Uh, it is a stand-up comedy event, uh, but through the stand-up comedy and also some uh, activities, uh, we would have the staff and the students to have some conversation about diversity. Uh, and so it is something that uh, we try to do to provide a platform for people to talk about these types of issues. And then more formally, uh, we do have a lot of training opportunities, including in-person workshops and online training modules, as well as a collection of toolkits and resources, which you can find at the very end of the presentation. I have provided a link. Uh, all of these are available for everyone on campus, including faculty, staff, and students to enhance their understanding of issues related to diversity and inclusion. But one more unique thing that we have done uh, is providing cultural sensitivity workshop for our frontline staff. We only started to pilot it uh, in 2023, uh, and we are engaging some Cantonese-speaking frontline staff from different areas such as sports facilities or and security office to attend cultural sensitivity training with Cantonese-speaking cultural ambassadors who are non-Chinese, as you can see in the picture. That generates a lot of great conversation because the reality is a lot of our students um, live on campus and day in and day out, they do interact with all these frontline staff. Uh, but if the frontline staff is not prepared, there would be a lot of misunderstanding or biases that are going on. Uh, thankfully, uh, after this effort, 50% uh, of the participants uh, said that uh, they used to have a lot of, or quite a lot of implicit bias towards people from different cultural backgrounds before the workshop. Uh, but after they attended the workshop, 61% uh, said they would reduce their bias a lot or quite a lot in future interactions. So that's a very encouraging result. And after the pilot last year, we continue to provide this uh, as a regular training for our frontline staff. So what we have learned from all these inclusivity efforts that I have outlined for you, uh, what we've learned is that positive campus climate is very important and our campus community members can feel excluded in even the smallest interactions, including those at home and at a food outlet. Therefore, we do need to engage as many stakeholders as possible in our overall effort. So for HKUST, uh, the two main things that we have included recently uh, would be a committee uh, to oversee the entire effort uh, to provide coordination. And we also added a piece uh, with the engagement uh, with the frontline staff. I know a lot of the professional staff will receive this type of cultural sensitivity training or they can actually go and learn online. Uh, however, some of these frontline staff would not have the habits of going online to seek for those resources. So having them to attend in-person workshop is super helpful. And all those uh, interactions are held in Cantonese with cultural diversity center. Uh, so uh, with all the uh, inclusivity uh, effort, uh, we can uh, really enhance the awareness of implicit biases and also call for some commitment to change to be more cultural sensitive. Yeah, so I hope that you find this uh, sharing helpful. And uh, at the end, uh, you can take a look at some of these researches or some of the links uh, that uh, would provide some additional uh, insights for you uh, based on my sharing. So thank you very much for your attention.